everyone and welcome to my new apartment. It is um, still a mess right now. I am still um, getting settled in but the good news is, is that my kitchen is clean and I've been doing a lot of cooking in it because I love it and I have been making my grandmother's um, boiled custard recipe. So about two weeks ago we made meringue and now I'm going to focus on the other half of eggs and that is the egg yolks. So if you are from the south then you may have heard of boiled custard but if you're not from the south then that may seem like a weird foreign concept to you. But regardless it's a really really good dessert. I also have a lot of memories of my grandmother making it. Um, especially during the Christmas season. I'm sure she made gallons of it. So the tricky thing about making any kind of custard that is egg yolk based is that there's always the risk that the eggs could curdle. A lot of times you are pouring raw eggs into hot milk and that can cause you to make scrambled eggs accidentally, which doesn't taste good just having like chunks of nasty cooked egg in your pudding. It's just not fun. But once you try it a few times and if you use all of the patience that you have, you can make a really amazing and smooth custard and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. This will probably be more tutorial level than it will be science, but I still will be inputting some little sciencey tidbits in there. Alright, so let's get started. Luckily for this, you only need four ingredients. And the first one is a quart of milk. I am doubling this recipe, so I am going to be using a half gallon of milk. I recommend using whole milk um, if you can. If you are in a pinch and you only have like 2%, that might be okay. I've never tried it though. Um, I don't think you'd be able to do it with skim milk because you definitely need that fat content. Um, you also need 12 egg yolks. So I've got some eggs right here and I'm gonna separate them and then a half a cup of sugar. And the sugar is just gonna sweeten it, but there's not a lot of sugar in it because there's gonna be a little bit of natural sweetness that comes in later. You're also going to need some vanilla, and vanilla is one of the main flavor components in here, so I recommend trying to get a really good kind of vanilla, or try to get at least pure vanilla extract and not just like imitation vanilla. I know it's more expensive than, you know, the cheapest vanilla on the shelf possible, but to me it really makes a difference, especially because you add the vanilla after you make the custard, and so it's really going to be important for that vanilla to add that flavor component. If you want a little bit more of a vanilla flavor, you can always get a vanilla bean and scrape out the seeds on the inside and put it in there, and it will probably enhance that vanilla flavor. All of this cooking is going to be done on the stove, and so I just have a heavy bottom saucepan. I tried using a double boiler for this recipe, but it just really didn't cook anything quickly enough. So I'm just going to use this directly on the stove, but if it's your first time making any kind of custard, then you can definitely use a double boiler if you feel like that will give you a little bit of a peace of mind, because a double boiler certainly delays the heating process a little bit. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the eggs. And so I have got two bowls here. I've got this container, which is just a container where I keep my egg whites and I just took it out of the fridge, so I'm just gonna put it right here. You can use the egg whites later to make an egg white omelet or meringue. If you wanna know how to make meringue, then you can click the link up here. If you've never separated an egg before, um, it's not too hard, but it is a little bit finicky. I'm gonna show you two ways you can separate eggs without necessarily needing an egg separator. Although you can certainly buy that. I used it for a long time when I started cooking. The first step is the jiggle technique. So what I do is I just tap the egg on the counter and we're going to split it open very carefully. And as you can see, the egg whites are going to spill out and you're just going to plop the egg yolk back and forth and let those egg whites kind of fall out in the center. Unlike meringue, it's definitely okay if a little bit of egg white gets in your egg yolk but it's not okay for you to get any kind of egg yolks in your egg white. Another technique, which to me is a little bit more foolproof, but it's also a lot messier, is using your hands. Tap it on the counter. 
You are then going to use your hands. So what I do is I just take my hands and I splay the fingers a little bit so that the egg yolk won't fall through. So that the egg yolk, egg, sorry, egg white will fall through my fingers. And you just kind of let it sit in your hand. You want to be kind of delicate with it. Um, and then once you think you have all the white out of it, just pop it in the bowl. I recommend if you've never separated eggs before, separate your eggs in a separate bowl and then pour the egg white and the egg yolk into their respective bowls. That way, if you do mess up and a little bit of yolk gets in your whites, it's not like you have to throw out all of your egg whites. All right, so I'm gonna finish separating these and then we will get on to the next step. If you double the recipe and you use 12 egg yolks, um, you can definitely use the egg whites to make an angel food cake. Usually angel food cakes require 12 egg whites. All right, so now all of our eggs are separated. I'm gonna take a moment and rinse off my hands real fast. All right, so now that all of our egg yolks are separated, I poured myself a glass of wine and I recommend pouring yourself a glass of water or wine or whatever because you're gonna be here for a while, you're gonna be stirring for a little bit, so definitely get yourself in the mental state to do that. So, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our pot and we are going to grab our milk and we are gonna just pour it into the pot for you self-explanatory. And the next thing we're gonna do is turn on our heat and I recommend turning your heat onto medium and just let the milk heat up. The thing that we want to do right now is scald our milk, which basically means that we heat it up so that it is steaming but not boiling. Another good way to see if your milk is scalded is to see if bubbles have formed around the edges. But again, we do not want our milk to be boiling. While it's heating up, take your whisk and we are going to beat our egg yolks. And we want to beat them really finely, really well. We want them to be as cohesive as possible. While the milk is heating up, you can take a moment to enjoy your champagne and your spa experience. It's currently raining outside, so just trying to bring as much light into my life as possible. All right, so our milk is scalded now, and we are going to move on to the next step, and this is the step where things can go south really, really quickly. Just remember, patience is key with custard. So the first thing I like to do before I start tempering my eggs is I turn the heat down to low, and the milk should still be scalded enough. It should still keep at the heat it's supposed to, um, but when you pour it back into the pan, it's not gonna be at a super high heat. Our next step is going to be something called tempering. And that is a step in where we heat the egg yolks very, very slowly. And that is because if you just pour this hot milk into the cold eggs, you're gonna make scrambled eggs. So our goal is to heat them up slowly so that the eggs are not shocked into scrambling. And so what you're gonna need is just some kind of measuring cup or ladle, so I just have a little half cup measuring. And basically, I'm just gonna take some of the hot milk and I'm gonna take my whisk in the other hand and put it into the bowl. And so we're gonna start whisking and we're just gonna drizzle the milk in just a few drops at a time. There's no need to rush. You definitely don't wanna make custard in a hurry. Uh, but we're just gonna go very slowly. And like I said, there's no need to rush. Patience is the key. Once you've added a few drops already, you can kind of start to go a little bit faster. Um, but you know, you really just have to use your eye. It's better to go too slow than too fast. Now that that is done, if you haven't turned your heat to low already, go ahead and do that. And we are going to quickly take our mixture that's in the bowl and pour it back into the pan. I say carefully because you definitely don't want to spill it. And the next thing we're gonna do is just stir and stir and stir and stir and stir. We're basically just gonna stir it until it is thick. Now, if you want another telltale sign to say whether um, a custard is at that thickening stage yet, you can use your candy thermometer and when it is at 170 degrees, that's generally when it should be thick. And then another tactic you can try to see if it's ready is stick a metal spoon in it and see if it coats the back of it. 
key is, we're just gonna stir and stir and stir and stir, and I will connect back with you guys when this is starting to thicken. So last week we talked a little bit about what proteins are and what proteins do in eggs, especially when you cook them. And so I'm not gonna go into super duper detail about that, but I will give you a brief overview. Egg yolks, like egg whites, have proteins in them, which are composed of amino acids. And so when we heat them, we denature these proteins. And so that's the idea behind heating up the egg yolks slightly and making sure that we heat them up slowly as we stir the custard. And it's so that we can denature those proteins, but also refold them so that they will reshape and form a thicker, more cohesive um, consistency. The fat in egg yolks helps with the creaminess of the custard. And so the more egg yolks we have, the more creamy something is gonna be. That's why egg yolks are in ice cream and sometimes as an extra ingredient in cookies, we'll add an extra egg yolk. We can also add an extra egg yolk to pasta doughs. And the more yolk we add, the more fatty it's going to be, the more creamy it's going to be. Surprisingly, there is a lot of research on the mouthfeel and sensation one gets from eating something that's very creamy. And a lot of scientists are actually working on ways to replicate that so that people can make artificial or vegan foods that are creamy, like their non-vegan counterparts. Fun fact about eggs in general. So they are unfertilized chicken fetuses, basically a chicken period, but when the egg is fertilized and a baby chick starts to develop inside of the egg, the egg yolk actually contains all the nutrients and all the fat necessary for the chick to grow. So egg yolks are essentially chicken placentas. When you want to make something healthy, don't necessarily think that you can't have egg yolks in, say, your omelet or in your morning eggs. You can definitely eat the egg yolks and you probably should in many cases. Good morning everyone, or afternoon, it's uh, 4 p.m. So I let my custard chill in the fridge overnight and it did thicken up quite a bit upon cooling, but not super thick. So I decided to cook it a little bit more. So it's fine now in the pot cooling again, but it is now this lovely, thick and creamy consistency um, that tastes amazing. And so now we are going to make the topping for it, which is whipped cream. If you've never made whipped cream before, it's really, really easy and you can do it with a hand mixer. I'm going to be using my big KitchenAid mixer just because it's easier. All you need is some heavy whipping cream and about two tablespoons of sugar, um, not really a lot of sugar. So yeah, let's get started. I've got some heavy whipping cream I'm gonna pour like about a cup in here. It really is just about you how much whipped cream you wanna make. Um, there's not really a recipe for it. Well, I mean, there is a recipe, but I've never followed a recipe. So I'm gonna pour maybe half a cup to a full cup of heavy whipping cream into the mixer. And we're gonna wait to add the sugar, but I am gonna keep it right here. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna grab just a kitchen towel. And this is just because the cream is gonna start splattering all over the place once you turn your mixture on really high speed. So I recommend just covering it up with a kitchen rag or a paper towel or something so that it doesn't splatter. Right, and then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn the mixer up to high and wait for it to turn into whipped cream. So that's pretty much all that goes into making an egg yolk custard but let's dive into the whipped cream a little bit because that's also kind of interesting. So like whole milk, heavy cream has a very high fat content and more fat than a whole milk will. When you beat that heavy cream at a really high speed, you're actually moving those fat molecules around and around and around and you are also putting air into the liquid. And that is gonna cause air bubbles to form, but it's also gonna cause the air bubbles to be encased with that fat. And when you try to make butter, you are beating the cream so much and so quickly that more and more fat molecules draw together and that creates more butter-like consistency. So the more you beat heavy cream, the more it's going to get stiff. And that is because of those fat molecules moving around and also sticking together. 
All right, so as you can see, we've got a nice stiff whipped cream. And one thing that you want to be careful with is you definitely do not want to beat the cream too much or else it will start turning into butter. Um, and it's happened to my sister. But the good news is that it really takes a long time. It has to beat for a really long time in order to actually turn into butter. So don't be super paranoid about it. So now we're gonna serve it up. It's still pretty warm right now, but still it's very, very good. Um, the whipped cream definitely helps sweeten it up. If you want to add more to it, you can definitely add some sliced bananas to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy some of my other videos that involve cooking, chemistry, and science overall. You can definitely click the link at the end of the video to see something else you may like. All right, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.